It's 2024, and I know you've been wondering, what is Sony up to? Well, on this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the new models that they have coming out for the TV market. Myself and a few other creators were invited over to the Sony's motion picture facilities where we spent a few days to see how movies are created from the visuals to the audio, the soundtracks, and that gave us a better understanding of what Sony's trying to do. Now, they did show us these four new TVs that are about to hit the market. There's one direct LED, there's two mini LEDs, and one OLED, and I'm gonna show you that on this video. Now, with that being said, uh, this is not a full review, but just to give you a brief uh, overlook of what's to come. Let's get into it. Before we get into this lineup, just let you know that Sony rebranded everything. So now everything is called Bravia. And that was something that they used on the Bravia Core for their uh, streaming service, as well as Bravia Sync for the audio components connected to it. But let's take a look at the first one that I want to show you. So starting off with the Bravia 3, this is a direct LED television. It's going to be similar to your X80J and X80K. It's going to be available in a 43 inch all the way up to an 85 inch. So there's plenty of sizes in between like your 55 inch. Now this is a 60 hertz television with a motion rate of 240 and it will support Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, as well as your DTS, HDR10 and HLG picture profiles. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be an entry level television to get into the Sony lineup. So with the Dolby Vision, it's gonna be a step above the X77L that I reviewed on this channel. But again, the X80K that came out years ago was a very popular television. And I assume this one's gonna be the new one to replace that. Just like all the other Sony TVs, it will be powered by Google TV. It will not have the ATSC 3.0 TV tuner, but I expect this TV to look pretty good overall. Again, for people who are looking to get into the Sony brand, but don't want to spend a lot of money compared to the higher end ones. The last few things to mention about the Bravia 3 is that it's going to be powered by the 4K HDR X1 processor. So it's going to be good enough for your average consumers and produce those natural uh, lifelike images that Sony's always put out there. And when it comes to gaming, it will have a gaming bar with the crosshair and it will support tone mapping for PS5 and it will have auto low latency, but lack variable refresh rate. Next, we're gonna take a look at the Bravia 7, which is a mini LED television. Now I don't have all the specs as far as local dimming zones or any of that stuff, but I will tell you that this TV was so much more brighter than the Bravia 3 that this is gonna be for people who really take movies seriously. The Bravia 7 will be available from a 55 inch up to 85 inch, and it has the XR processor that's found in their higher end models. The Bravia 7 is 120 hertz, so they opted out going to 144 hertz that some of the current TVs are doing, but what people are not telling you is that it, it requires a $1,000 video card and in spurts you get VRR. So I think Sony did the right thing here when it comes to that. The Bravia 7 also has the ATSC 3.0 TV tuner and it has a new feature called Voice Zoom 3. And I got a chance to see the demo, but I couldn't record audio, but what the Voice Zoom 3 does is it gives you a volume control just on the voice. So it takes that audio track and really lets you bring out that dialogue and watching some demos this is going to be a game changer for Sony when it comes to making the movie experience much better. And it pairs with their theater speakers as well to be able to give you that control. Another thing I want to point out about this new stand design is that now you have the legs on the outside. If you want to slide a center channel to the center of it, or you can put them close together for small stands. Also, I like the fact that this stand is adjustable so you can raise it up and down no matter which position you put it in. So that is a new change for this particular television. Now I want to show you some demos of this TV and it looks fantastic. Not only that it supports the IMAX Enhanced, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, but it also supports calibrated apps such as Netflix, Sony Picture, which is Bravia Core, and now they include Prime Video. So when you have a TV like this, it'll be automatically calibrated from the servers so you're gonna get the best picture quality. And if you play gaming consoles, this TV is definitely the one to get if you're looking at the Sony lineup because it does support 120 hertz with HDMI 2.1. It also supports variable refresh rate and it supports auto load latency and you get a gaming bar as well so you can do some adjustments like the crosshair. Now let's talk about the top of the line flagship model. This is the Bravia 9. This TV is going to be the cream of the crop when it comes to mini LED technology. And the Bravia 9 will support up to 4,000 nits of peak brightness. And at first, I thought this was just about brightness, but Sony showed us 
one of their high-end reference series monitors and showed us where this NITS rating is going to bring in more details that we have never seen before on a television. Another thing that's different about this mini LED is that the images or using AI to make sure that the contrast ratios work with the local dimming zone to achieve the absolute best picture quality. The Bravia 9 will be available in three different sizes from a 65 inch all the way up to an 85 inch and it has the same processor and features as the Bravia 7. Now we'll tell you that it does include a few other things like the high peak luminance, better viewing angles, and an anti-reflection screen. It is powered by Google TV and it has the four-way stand. This TV supports the Voice Zoom 3 feature and the speaker below it is one of the new Sony audio systems. And it's called the Bravia Theater Bar 9, which I'll show you a little bit more details about it in just a moment. Seeing this TV live, I was just amazed how bright it is in comparison because personally, I'm still using the Sony X95L, which is a great television. But when you see all the details that it's picking up on movies and using Sony's equipment to calibrate the main screens, this TV is going to be a game changer for people who are movie watchers. And for gamers, you still have two HDMI 2.1s. You still have the gaming bar and you will have the ability to hook it up to an audio system and still get the on screen menu. So there's some improvements as well on this television. The final TV we're going to talk about is called the Bravia 8, which is a OLED television. This TV is available from a 55 inch all the way up to a 77 inch if you want a larger screen. Now, the one thing about this TV, it has all the same features of the Bravia 7 and the Bravia 9, except for this is OLED. And what makes this TV different than the mini LED is that all the pixels only light up when they see a signal. So you're going to get the best contrast ratio out of all these TVs, mainly because OLED doesn't have backlights like a traditional television. In my opinion, I think OLEDs is one of the best designs ever, mainly because the viewing angles are fantastic. The contrast ratio is always going to be spot on as far as the details and the blackness and the colors that are reproduced are fantastic. Now we'll tell you that OLED will not get as bright as the mini LED, but it's a trade off. Do you want the best contrast ratio or do you want the brightest TV? So that's something that you have to decide as a consumer. But I would tell you that this Sony looks fantastic. And unfortunately, the last one I reviewed was the A80K, which was a great television. I was very impressed with it. And this one is really hitting the mark. And for people who are into OLED, this is definitely going to be a contender in the market just because Sony's color science makes it look more natural than most TVs out there. Now, there is a new set of audio speakers coming out and they're titled Bravia Theater. There's a U series, there's a Bar 8, a Bar 9, and a Quad series. And all these have different variants of audio and sound. But I want to show you the Bar 9 that is pretty much replacing the HTS 7000 that I did a review on. One of the major changes that they did is that the main speaker has all new drivers and this still has features like the 360 spatial mapping. And I would say the sound quality is much better than the HT7000. I think the 7000 soundbar is great, but it did lack a few features. One thing is that all the menu systems are inside of the soundbar and you can connect it to Wi-Fi to get updates and things like that. But it's lacked a few things that the Bar 9 is gonna have. First of all, the Bar 9 can use the application to use the microphone on your cell phone to calibrate the room to the optimus position. The second thing that they added is now with the application, you can adjust all your speakers from the app instead of having to go into the menu system. So that's gonna be some great improvements as well. I was very excited to see this new lineup of Sony televisions and it looks like they're listening to the consumer to make better products and give you a better experience. Now all these TVs will be releasing very soon and as I get links where you can see more details, I will post them in the description as well as the comments below. But I have a question for you. What do you think about this new lineup and is Sony doing enough to make improvements over the competition? That'd be good to know. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.